When it comes to the world of Animal Crossing, <laughs> I'll be the first to tell you, I'm generally not the first person you think of to go to when it comes to thoughts and or in-depth of IQs about what makes Animal Crossing so appealing to so many people, and or what makes it a long-lasting series in general. Real life or such simulators like this don't really appeal to me. Games like Sims, Minecraft, etc, etc. Not that there's anything wrong with them, I mean, I've tried them once or twice back in the day, but sometimes I find myself struggling to call these games, if you know what I mean. I tend to value clarity overall when it comes to video games, and by that I mean having an overall objective that you know you should follow, with the potential threat of failure. But bear in mind, having games that allow you to create exotic worlds and fantasies and things of that nature is by no means a bad thing, nor is it something that I myself wouldn't find enjoyable. As long as I knew it was building up to something that was worthwhile and the trouble. This brings us to the newest Animal Crossing game just released for the Nintendo Switch, Animal Crossing New Horizons. Now again, ordinarily, not something I would consider picking up on my own, and, well, since the Brotherhood of Gaming channel has made some new additions and friends, who were already fans of this genre, it was pretty much insisted that I give this new game a try, if, for nothing else, the ability to play with others online. Lord knows I don't do that a whole bunch. I admit I'm usually a solo adventurist. Okay, so without diving into any history, all I really know about Animal Crossing is that it technically started back on the Nintendo 64 in Japan, but didn't get its true claim to fame until people started playing it on the Nintendo GameCube. And the only reason I know it existed then was because of those commercials advertising it. You know the ones. Here is a true story. Of four friends picked to live in a video game. And find out what happens when they stop being themselves. And start being someone else. Animal, Animal Crossing, Crossing for Nintendo, Nintendo GameCube. A walrus moved into the village today. Hot. I've just been fishing, you know, seeing some pals. All Rob does is fish. Fish and see his pals. I'm the one getting the job, attending the go- Oh, uh, what a time that was to be alive. Anybody remember how creative video game commercials used to be? I mean, nowadays it's just snippets of gameplay with some potential pop music in the background or something atmospheric to get you into the mood. But back then, oh, I still get chills at that Legend of Zelda Wind Waker commercial. But hey, in true Nintendo fashion, they stuck with the idea, and since then, the villagers have become iconic mainstays of the Nintendo brand, continuing to make game releases for each console, and I assume only adding more and more options for the gamers to play with, and probably a change of scenery just to keep it fresh. And again, if it's not already clear, I have never played an Animal Crossing game. Until now. So I guess you can consider this not just a review, but a beginner's guide and thoughts on Animal Crossing and if anyone can pick up and play this new entry without having already been well versed in the series. Well, let's begin. Oh, by the way, spoilers and such. Not sure what there is to spoil here, but you've been warned. So upon startup, begin with the character creation, which is very similar to making a me, but sadly your options are pretty limited. In fact, for a long while, everything is limited. You are a fresh villager that can take ownership of an island of your choice, and when you first get there, you'll see nothing but trees, fruits, places you can't reach, waters you can't cross, mountains you can't climb, prices you can't afford, no money in your wallet. Jesus Christ, this game is a little too real. And with nothing but time and hard work in front of me, oh, <laughs> yeah, there's only one course of action here. Okay, let's be real here, you aren't completely helpless. You do start off on the island with only five things at most. Two extra villagers who live among you, whom are pretty much trying to get their own crap together, so they're useless, a starter tent, and Tom Nook to act as your advisor along with his little helpers who will offer you some useful tools in exchange for the in-game currency called belts. Tom will almost right away give you a cell phone complete with apps but you'll unlock further, more useful apps when you accomplish certain criteria, which I'll get to later. One of the first things Tom will mention is the Nook Miles points. These, like the bells, are another form, well, a lesser form of currency that you can exchange at the ATM for other nifty items like a passport to briefly fly to additional uncharted islands to gather as many materials as you can to bring back to your island 
in order to help it thrive. This can include rare flowers, other fruits, which you can use to grow more fruit-bearing trees on your island, rack up other villagers to increase the island's population, and maybe some other trees like bamboo. All right, pay attention here, guys. Getting materials is one of, if not the biggest factor in this game. Not only can you sell it to get some money in your pocket, but you will also be using this stuff to craft items, which can be simple stuff for cosmetics or useful tools to help you farm for better materials down the line. I would highly recommend prioritizing the crafting system for the tools and make it a regular thing if you must, because wouldn't you know it, the tools, of course, have limited usage. In other words, they will break after a short while and you will have to acquire new ones. So yes, using the shovel, the axe, the slingshot, the fishing rod, anything that you have on you to farm for materials will eventually give out. Oh joy. Seems video games haven't quite yet learned the lesson that weapon, item, and tool degradation over time is not a good or fun way to make a game hard. It's just annoying. Oh, whatever. But you could, in theory, just buy all the tools you'll need, but... Uh, this is not a wise choice at the start of the game, as money will come and go really fast this way. And trust me, you are going to need a lot of money down the line for bigger tasks. So if nothing else, try to save and gain as much money as possible and only spend if you need to. As you make expansions to buildings, including your own home, it's going to cost you plenty of those uh, bells, and those debts do add up fast, and you will have to pay them off if you want to make any further improvements. In order to do so, you have to go to the ATM, and yep, you pretty much get the idea. So, in a sense, do whatever you need to. This is a capitalist world, people! The Nook Miles, which I mentioned earlier as a different breed of currency, is also important to a smaller degree. But getting them points isn't as simple. Your phone will keep track of the milestones that you accomplish, and the more you do means the more Nook points you'll get in return. It's sort of like one of those gotcha systems from those phone games that, you know, want to bleed your wallet. But fear not. Animal Crossing New Horizons is not cruel that way. There are no hidden paywalls to make the game any easier. Well, unless you count Amiibo, but... <laughs> Bottom line, if you play the game wisely and do what you are supposed to do, the points will come. In time. Speaking of time, a lot of it is going to be mostly busy work, from gathering wood, crafting items, picking weeds, selling weed, and using the rewards to try to move up in the world. Now I mentioned earlier that when it comes to these free build-your-own-world type games, where it almost feels like there's no real objective other than to just live this life simulator, well, to my surprise, Animal Crossing New Horizons does actually have a goal. Although it's not immediately made obvious, but over time, Tom Nook will explain to you his intentions for the island and his endgame. He happens to be a really big fan of this K.K. Slider person, who I correctly assumed is this dog character that I've been seeing around with the guitar. I've seen this guy quite a bit in other games like Smash Brothers in the backgrounds and in other promotional arts. It turns out, this guy is actually a pretty big celebrity singer in this universe. And Tom Nook, being his number one fan, wants to have the island get big enough to get Senpai K.K. Slider's attention and have him come to the island of his own volition to play a concert. This will not be the first set of goals to make, but it will be the longest one to achieve. However. If you do manage to do this, you have essentially beaten the game. Now you can take the game back to GameStop and get that $2 of trade-in value. Except, no, don't. Not only because it's a ripoff, but no, you've beaten the game, but you haven't beaten the game, if that makes any sense. All right, look, here, let me tell you why. First of all, getting KK Slider to this island is not going to be an easy feat. Depending on how you play this game, it could potentially take hundreds of hours for events to play out. And that's because the game takes place in real time. As in, if you want to build a house, it's going to take 24 hours for that house to be completed. And no, that's not in video game time. Nah, -uh, not in no friends. This ain't no Zelda Majora's Mask. This is real life, son. Which means if you're playing Animal Crossing the way Nintendo intended for you to, that means there is pretty much a limit to how much you can accomplish per day in the game. If you pick all the weeds on the land, 
that means it's going to take a few real days in order for them to start re-sprouting. You planted some trees? All right, I guess it's going to take nearly a week to literally see the fruits of that labor. Per tree and per stone, there are only three chunks of materials that you can get out of them per day. So yes, Animal Crossing, by design, is meant to be played over a long period of time, constantly and routinely, in order to almost, like in real life, get the most out of your hard work. Animal Crossing isn't by any means the only game to do this, however. Seaman for the Sega Dreamcast is another game that immediately came to my mind that is also meant to be played in minimal increments throughout a long period of time in order to see any growth or change in the game. What's clever about Animal Crossing, though, or at least what it boasts, is that it tries to keep its in-game weather conditions matching the region and time you set it to based on where you live. So if it's daytime, dusk, nighttime, or morning in your region, the game will reflect that. But it's not without purpose. Some exotic bugs and fish you can collect can only appear at certain times of the day, and sometimes <laughs> within the year, as well as certain special events, so you know, keep an eye out for those. So you can imagine how this game is supposed to be played and how your time is supposed to be spent. Key word being supposed. Because like with the Sega Dreamcast, and frankly any game that's reliant on your hardware's internal clock, I think it's pretty obvious what just about most gamers do. You see, by going into the Nintendo Switch's clock settings, you can mess with the date and time and manipulate it to whatever you want it to be. And of course, this will affect the game. Now, I know some gamers in the Animal Crossing community have a problem with exploiting the game like this because it definitely can be looked at as cheating. But ultimately, it is a harmless way to play the game because it at least allows you to play it in one long sitting, allowing you to get a ton of work done instead of short sessions per day with minimal accomplishments. To play the game like this is ultimately up to you, but from what I've heard, you'll be hard pressed to find players whom haven't done this in their own world. And there is no penalty for doing so, and frankly, there's no reason not to do it. Most would say it's not until way later in Animal Crossing games where the real fun begins, and they're not really wrong about that, which is why I hunch people do this exploit in the first place. For a good while before KK Slider shows up, your agenda is going to be pretty routine, from farming collectible materials, fishing and capturing exotic animals, persuading other villagers to live on your island, consulting with Tom Nook on how to improve the island, which leads you to building houses for other villagers along with crafting specific items for them, funding and building museums, expansions to your house, local stores, helping new villagers open their clothing stores, which expands on your creativity. Railways through Africa. Exactly. Dams across the Nile. The ships, tell them about the ships. Fleets of ocean greyhounds. More, tell them more. Hell, just for the fun of it, you can even go into your cell phone app and create your own paintings and even buy an app update, which allows you to custom design your own clothing. And yes, this is exactly why I look like Reed Herschel from my favorite game, Tales of Eternia. All right, on another note, sometimes villagers will randomly come to your island asking something of you to either help you get a quick buck, or maybe these guys are just scouting out the island to see if they want to live there. Tom Nook's tent after a while will eventually upgrade to a plaza where the character Isabel, another well-known character from the Animal Crossing series, will finally show up to give you more options in which to improve the island further. This is the point where Tom will start telling you about his senpai. Eventually, you'll be able to fund bridges to cross streams, staircases to reach higher planes, build more houses to encourage economic growth, and you'll achieve that sense of conquest as your affluence expands. Yeah, 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 you get the idea. So yes, spend wisely. After completing the game, and by that I mean seeing the credits, the game will open up further, allowing you the full-scale creative freedom one would expect in a game like this. From this point onward, you'll actually be able to upgrade your island to have roads and even further enhancements you couldn't ordinarily have access to. But of course, none of this is going to happen overnight. All of these enhancements are going to cost you plenty of money and plenty of time in order to gather all the materials. One thing I didn't mention is that while crafting is a major way to play the game, you can't just craft anything you want willy-nilly. 
you'll have starter items, which will be enough to get you by. But either by exploring your island on a daily basis, or by collecting through happenstance, you'll come across recipes that will allow you to learn how to craft new items for your home, or just for your town. Sometimes, giving these items to your fellow villagers can result in them giving you something back, or just growing relationships with each one of them, which will have them maintain residency on the island. Yeah, I, I, I guess that's a thing. Villagers, depending on how they feel, especially towards one another, can cause them to have mixed feelings and or make them want to leave the island. You can potentially solve this yourself by getting involved, or you can wimp out and have Isabel handle the confrontations herself. But honestly, I've never had to deal with anything like it, and the problems that these people face are generally easy to solve just by talking it out, so I really wouldn't worry about it all that much. Now, when it comes to gathering items, uh, sad to say, you are pretty much going to be praying to the RNG gods because all of the items and materials you can gain and buy are randomly generated. Each day you visit the Sable Sisters clothing store, it will have different apparel to purchase. And there is no manipulating this. Well, not to my knowledge anyway. Even special items you can buy from the ATM tend to change around every now and then. More often than not, you will also receive surprise gifts in your mailbox from friends you did a favor for, or just kind of randomly like that. Speaking of which, storage space is a thing. <laughs> oh, more fun. You can only carry up to so many items at a time. And yeah, as you can imagine, in a game where you're supposed to go out there and collect and build and stuff, Having inventory space with a limited capacity can be a royal pain in the ass because, naturally, you're going to be inclined to pick up anything and everything. One of the enhancements I prioritized right away was additional inventory slots, allowing me four rows. It's handy, but even this sometimes never feels like it's enough. But rest assured, anything you don't want on you at the time can be stored back inside your house, which does have an unlimited amount of space, so eh, it's better than nothing. So hey, if you feel like you are hoarding way too much, just drop it all off at the home and then sort it out later, and take with you only what you need for whatever task you're trying to accomplish. I did have to borrow some footage for this, but Animal Crossing New Horizons has an incredible amount of imaginative items and an incredible amount of ways that you can create your own little world. I thought I was being creative by making this bedroom feel like a Ninja Turtles room out of the 2003 cartoon, and making a fancy little traditional Japanese onsen just for uh, the funnies. But if you do play the game smart and spend your time wisely, you can somehow turn this island into pretty much what looks like a full-scale city. God damn, that's some dedication. Oh boy, oh, okay. Now, the last thing I'm going to talk about is being able to play online with your friends, which is pretty much the reason why I was forced to get this game in the first place. By visiting this airport, you can meet up with these Dodo Bird characters. I'm not going to lie. I, <laughs> I honestly, I really like these guys. Because look, you got this one guy at the desk that's frantically trying to take his job way too seriously, and clearly he's stressed. And you got the other one with the shades that likes to spout nonsense every time he gets on the little microphone on his helmet. And he, too, also takes his job pretty seriously. I can't get enough of these guys. But listen, people, whatever you do, be careful when searching for images of these characters online. Rule 34, no one is safe. But hey, look, unless you're into birds, go for it. I mean, whoo, whoo. Hubba hubba, there's no shortage, <laughs> let me tell you. Anyway, back on track. So whenever you use your Nook Miles to redeem one of the passport tickets, you can bring it here, which will allow the Dota Birds to fly you to another uncharted island to scavenge for materials like I mentioned earlier. But the secondary feature here is to have your gates be open so your friends can visit your island over Wi-Fi, or you can visit them. There's little you can actually do once departed, but if you or your friend has an abundance of items, you can easily exchange and stock up on materials, and then some. Especially stuff you may not have already had. Oh, and bonus if you have a rich friend. They can even bestow large sacks of cash on you for nothing just to give you a helping hand. So, believe me, there are some benefits here. <laughs> Who says you can't buy your friend's love? There is also local co-op as well, where players can share the same screen. 
This doesn't really accomplish much in the grand scheme. Not that I can guess. But it does make cleaning up the island a little less of a chore if you're trying to de-weed everything. Hey, more hands make for lighter work after all. All in all, after experiencing this game for a good while, I can definitely say that I do have a more profound respect for the Animal Crossing games than I did prior. Don't get me wrong, I didn't hate them or anything. I certainly do understand its appeal, and can definitely recommend the game if you are into a more laid-back experience. And short play sessions. Keep in mind, this is by no means an action-packed, thrill-seeking adventure game. There is no violence to be found here. <laughs> well, not yet. But instead, what Animal Crossing does offer is, again, very similar to what you would find in most build-your-own type world games. A hub where you can quite literally express your art in a very fun and creative way, especially since you are able to share it with friends. I was impressed at just how much creative freedom I was allowed to have, right down to creating my own paintings and designs. While I still can't say Animal Crossing is my type of game or something in my general ballpark, to say I didn't enjoy it or have fun with it would be a bold lie. Despite its simplicity, it's still a very fun to play game and it brings its own rewards when you accomplish your own instilled goals. And I think that's really what Animal Crossing is all about. If nothing else, it's got longevity on its side and a lot of lasting appeal. More than enough to keep you coming back to it regularly if you just want to relax and build stuff. However, even now, I do find the price of admission being the full $60 a little bit steep. But if this is a game that you can commit yourself to, then the price is definitely worth it in the end. And that is my first impression on the Animal Crossing series, and that is also my review for Animal Crossing New Horizons. Well, guys, uh, you know, times are tough right now. I mean, at the time of this review, you can clearly see it's, it's crazy right now going on in the world. 2020 has been a hell of a year, and uh, I wish I could say it's been for the better, but it's been... It's been crazy with coronaviruses out there ruining lives and a death toll on the rise. Who really knows where the world is going from here? The only thing that I can encourage everybody out there to do is to remain optimistic and full of positive vibes because at the end of the day, we're going to need all of that positivity in order for humanity to move forward from this and to try to make the world a better place through whatever means that happens. I mean... At this current point in time, nobody really knows what's going to happen or where we're going to go from all of this. But all I urge you guys to do is to remain calm, stay in your homes, stay safe, stay clean, do whatever you have to do. Keep uh, close to your family, keep close to your loved ones, even if they're not <laughs> blood. But all in all, just try to stay smart. <laughs> we, we've seen a lot of really stupid things going on out there as well as the epidemic but just keep keep doing your best guys that's all i'm going to tell you and we're going to try to do the best we can on our end as well and bring you some entertainment the way we can we don't know how long this is going to last but we're going to try to move things forward the best we can i certainly am going to do the best i can as well and i hope that you will too so thank you guys for hanging out with me in this review i hope you enjoyed it to some degree i know it's not comedic or anything like that but informative it killed a few minutes for you i'm sure uh thank you for watching and definitely let us know in the comments below what you thought of animal crossing new horizons do you agree with my opinions do you think it was a good video for beginners who have never played an animal crossing game what videos would you like to see us do next i know that a lot of people would like to see more tomb raider stuff or maybe more tales of retrospective stuff all of that is coming in good time. There have been a lot of changes going on with the channel and life in general. People have gotten married. People have moved out. People are moving in. Uh, new talent is coming to our show. But we might... Things are going to be changing. Change is happening all around. It's a new decade. It's a new time of the world. Who knows what's going on. But let's try to make it the best we can. So, again, thank you guys for watching. I'm William Morris from ThePatheticGaming.com. See you next time. Hey there everyone, did you like this video? If you did, why not give us a thumbs up and maybe leave a comment and watch some more of our stuff. Also, if you really want to keep up with the Brotherhood of Gaming, such as myself, William Morris, or Eugene, you should really follow us on our Twitters, links provided below, so you can see what's coming up in the future. And since, you know, we have to play these games sometimes and record them, why not join us on our Twitch page where you can hang out with all of us as we do so and chit chat about the games that we love so much. 
Lastly, if you want to help keep our dreams alive, you can support us in any number of ways, either by continuing to view our videos, like them, share them with all your friends and family and your peeps and your girlfriends, or you can also join our small Patreon and throw all your spare cash away. We'll even give you a shout out. Once again, thank you all and have a wonderful day.